welcome to a new Getting, J to, Getting to Know Japan webinar. Thank you for joining us and a big thank you to our sponsor, the Japan Foundation New York, for funding this series and uh, enabling us to put this on each week. Today, we are joined by Captain Keizo Kitagawa, and who will be presenting on Perry's Black Ships and their influence on Japan's culture. So Captain Keizo Kitagawa is the Dean of Strategic Studies at the uh, Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. Uh, command and study college in Tokyo. Captain Kitagawa is also the director of the Naval Strategy Office of the Maritime Staff Office in Tokyo. He joined the JMSDF upon his graduation from the United States Naval Academy uh, in 1993, and he earned a Bachelor of Science. During his career, he earned a Master of Security Studies from the National Defense Academy of Japan in 2007 as well as a PhD from Keio University in 2018. In his extensive JMSDF career, Captain Kitagawa has been a service warfare officer, a communication officer, navigator, commanding officer, and a host of other impressive accomplishments. In addition to, to these achievements, he is also a fr frequent contributor to a variety of academic journals, and you can see his full bio on our event page. So Captain Kitagawa, it is a pleasure to have you with us today and I'll let you take it from here. Um, Amani, thank you very much for your uh, introduction. Um, um, the, uh, this morning uh, or um, yeah. this afternoon or this evening in the United States, um, a very warm welcome to um, the uh, audience for uh, today's uh, YCAPS uh, seminar, getting to know Japan webinar series. Um, today, uh, I'm going to talk about Perry's Black Ship and their influence on Japanese uh, culture. Um, this, this is the, um, by the end of this seminar, uh, the uh, participants will understand the, uh, the historical uh, background of, of our uh, Japan-US uh, uh, alliance and its, its root. And today, um, yes, it's... Um, 10 or three in Japan, but the uh, I took a day off. Uh, I didn't. I took uh, all chance to relax, and I'm speaking from my house in Zushi next to uh, Yokosuka. Uh, but for for the public uh, affairs purpose, I use my school's uh, uh, logo in the back. So uh, my view is my total original um, idea, and have nothing to do with the organ organization I belong. So let's begin. I'm going to talk about um, 30 minutes. Now I hand over to Amani and Jeff for the uh, uh, discussion. I'm very looking forward to have a candid discussion together. So I will share the um, my slides. Okay, right. So uh, Amani, can you see the slides at this moment? Yes, I can. Okay, good. All right. Now I would like to start um, this. Okay. Um, I would like to start with uh, for today's uh, takeaway. Um, it's a rather um, kind of conclusion. Um, for today's takeaway, I'm, I'm talking, uh, I hope uh, the audience will understand uh, history and geopolitics. And uh, there are three points on Commodore Perry's um, expedition to, to Japan. Uh, first, um, Perry's expedition in 1853 was opening of the modern Japan until this date, but is phenomenal. Second, in that sense, his ex expedition is mother of all uh, Japan-US alliance history. I can guarantee if you ask, um, many of you have been to Japan, but um, if you ask Japanese walking on the street, um, if you ask, uh, who do you know American name? I bet you that almost everyone knows Perry, Matthew Perry. Third, and it is very important for YCAPs that uh, the US United States Navy was a center of expedition and indeed, the United States Navy has been the center of our enduring history. So please see two maps of PowerPoint. Left map shows the center of gravity is moving toward Europe 
to um, uh, Asia. So e even in 1980s, the center of gravity of the economic center is rather um, Europe. But right now, perhaps 2022, maybe around India and 2050, may it comes to summer in China. The right map show that uh, is the uh, geo or strategic map, uh, which was made by Toyama Prefecture government. If you see Japan backwards, uh, opposite wise, uh, the Japan's location is surrounded by, for example, Russia, uh, China, and North Korea. For whoever wants to come out to the Pacific, uh, guess which country they have to pass? They all have to pass through Japan. So, oh, that's the that's the um, enduring um, a geostrategic point of Japanese archipelago. Okay, so let's go to the next contents. Okay, so today's contents uh, are eight points. So uh, please uh, bear with me. Okay, so if you have any questions. Um, I would love to uh, discuss afterwards. So first, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, the Matthew Garblaise Perry. Um, he was born into establishment Quaker family at South Kingston, Rhode Island on April 10, 1794. He was born in the 18th century. N known as Garblaise, he grew up in Newport, Narragansett Bay, his father, Craig Christopher Perry, after being imprisoned by the British in the revolution, had a successful career in the American Navy as well as a merchant service. And Calvis and three, his brother, uh, would go on to join the Navy, making the Perrys as a prominent naval family. Perry received his first naval appointment in 1809 when he was 15 acting as midshipman aboard the USS uh, Revenge, commanded by his older brother, famous Oliver Hazard Perry. During the early part of his naval career, he fought in the War of 1812, which is fought with uh, Britain, and patrolled Liberia in 1819 to 1820, and he was then involved in suppressing the piracy and the slave trade in the West Indies. He commanded a series of ships during the 1820s and 30s before being promoted to Commodore and the command of the Navy, New York Navy Yard in 1840 and fighting in the Mexican-American War of 1846 to 1848. So uh, interesting enough, Perry was a man of many interests. Um, he was passionate about naval education. He helped establish a naval curriculum and gunnery school and worked to implement an apprenticeship scheme. He was also interested in the modernization of the Navy and strongly supported the development and construction of steam powered ships. So it was a trip to Japan in 1850 to 54. Um, for Perry is best remembered. Uh, when Perry returned to America from Japan in 1855, he was advanced to the rank of rear admiral and retired soon afterwards. He died in New York on March 4th, 1858 at the age of 63. He was given an extremely lavish funeral, which included grand pageant throughout the New York City. And he was also famous for his interest in coin collecting. I understand there are some museum in the United States which has his collection. Perry stressed uh, the danger of British and Russian expansion and urged more active US role in the uh, Orient. He specifically recommended that acquisition of islands bases in the Pacific to assure US military and commercial superiority in the area but uh, the US government was not ready to act on these proposal for roughly half century. Main background was unfortunately um, after his expedition and his recommendation, uh, US went to the civil war 
of 1861 to 64, uh, which made more uh, in internal emphasis on uh, US uh, policy. Okay, so um, I'd like to talk about the uh, uh, background of the United States. Why, this is why the Perry come to Japan. Okay, and so um, um, before in the United States, um, particularly 1850s, uh, where uh, Perry lived, the Industrial Revolution started in the uh, Britain, changed the way uh, we uh, way they worked, and factories and offices began to operate late into the night. At that time, the oil used in the lamps and factories mainly used whale oil. You can see the uh, picture uh, right upper hand corner. I think many of you uh, um, remember the, the noble Moby Dick. That was a story around Japan. Um, according, the United States began to catch many whales in the sea around the world, including the uh, waters uh, around Japan. And the vicinity of the Izu Islands and Ogasawara Island chain near Japan were known as a place where fish can be caught well, and the United States goes to that place and fishes. But the problem is there was no supply base in the Pacific Ocean, uh, even though Hawaii was not US territory yet. So US ship used bases on the East coast of the United States, which is was extremely inefficient. So Perry's purpose of the expedition was to secure supply bases such as firewood and water in the Pacific Ocean for long-term fishing. One of the major factors behind this was that the United States was lagging behind the market expansion war, so-called the imperialism, over its colonies with Western Europe. And in the United States, go west was considered as a manifest destiny of the nation. That was the um, uh, characteristic of the United, 1850s United States. Next, how about, how was Japan in 1850s? The 1850s was still the Edo shogunate, uh, had isolated external relations. The shogunate government, which started in early um, 1700s, uh, had the uh, governed the um, uh, the country, which is um, uh, you know uh, with the authority of the emperor, for more than like two hundred fifty years. So um, the shogunate government ordered the prohibition of overseas travel of Japanese ships, restrictions on trading places and the expulsion of Portuguese nationals from Nagasaki under so-called isolation policy beginning in 1633, and its established system to conduct trade only with Dutch and Chinese ships in Nagasaki. The main objectives of this policy were to prohibit Christianity, which was spreading throughout Japan at the time and to prevent missionaries and others from infiltrating the country and from 1639 onwards. A coastal defense system centered on Kyushu was formed. However, since Korea had diplomatic relations through Tsushima and Ryukyu was also under the control of Satsuma, today's Kagoshima, it did not literally close the country. Focusing on this point, the concept of sea prohibition uh, prohib prohibition is also used. At first, the shogunate government had no rec recognition of the isolation of Japan, but since the rejection of Russia's trade demands in the early 19th century, the notion that isolation is the ancestral law was established, and it became the most important system concept that even shogunate had to uh, constrain. Since 1820s, there are ships, practically British ships, come around Japan, and there were incidents 
they came ashore. Tokugawa uh, shogunate knew that felt the impact of imperialism. Okay, so um, so Perry did the expedition twice. Okay, so first time in 1853 and second time in 1854. Uh, uh, so um, the United States uh, first his expedition, well, he brought the letter of Pre President Fillmore, which there were uh, three three points, three points. So uh, first point is helping if there is an American shipwreck. Second, allow US ships to replenish food, fuel, um, ex that what is coal, et cetera, in Japan. Third, allowing trade with the United States. How was the Japanese reaction to that? Okay, when Perry's fleet sailed uh, through Okinawa to Uraga, today's Yokosuka, the Japanese saw for the first time a steam ship with black smoke coming up from the stack, uh, which was not the same ship. The Japanese were running on a steam engine in addition to sail, and that time they called this ship black ship because the smoke that was rising. In preparation for the landings, the black ship surveyed Edo Bay, today's Tokyo Bay on its own, Obviously, it was without uh, perm without permission to a shogunate, and also fired empty guns for the celebration of American Independence Day, as well as orders and signals. This was co communicated in advance, but the town people of Edo mistook it for the artillery fire with the first air guns and became chaotic. However, when it was recognized that it was an empty gun, every time the sky gun was hit, it was filled with sense of fireworks. And finally, Uraga was filled with onlookers by the black ship, like tourists. Some people tried to, or to board the black ships in a small boat without permission or sell their goods. However, when the shogunate warned them to suppress this disturbance, no one tried to board the rumor of live firing shelling. Okay, second, next, how was Tokuga shogun a reaction to Perry. On July 9th, 1853, the day after Perry arrival, the shogun dispatched uh, Nakajima uh, Saburosuke, a member of Uraga um, magistrate's office to Perry on board. I understand that Perry's purpose was to hand over the letter of then president of the United States, the Fillmore, to uh, Tokugawa, uh, uh, the shogunate. However, Perry did not hand over the letter because of the low status of Saburosuke Nakajima. The next day, another powerful man, Kuma Ezaimon, went to Perry, but his response remained the same, and he did not give him the letter. Perry began to threaten the shogunate, which only had power to send to him that if he did not send someone a status suitable for entrusting the letter, he would let his troops and hand over the letter directly to Shogun. However, at this time, Tokugawa Yaki uh, was not in state to decide big things about the country due to illness. So Masahiro Abe, the, the like he was chief of staff of the uh, Tokugawa government, allowed Perry to land in place of Tokugawa uh, Yaki. And after Perry's landing, it was Toda, Toda uh, received a letter from President Fillmore uh, urging them to open the country. Later, Tokugawa told Perry that he wanted years um, time to think over to respond to opening the country due to his illness. And Perry told him that he would return in a year later. Instead of returning to the United States, he returned to Hong Kong to prepare for his uh, journey in 1854. Okay, so um, let me talk about uh, how was Japan be between uh, the visit? What happened? Uh, first, the anguish of the chief of staff, Masahiro Abe. Shortly after Perry left, 
Tokugawa Ieyoshi died, his succeeded Tokugawa uh, Yesada as a 13th shogun, but he was too ill to entrust the affair of the country. In addition, the number of people who advocated the Tang Dynasty mo movement to exclude foreign countries increased, and the shogunate was troubled by Perry's demand for opening the country. In the end, the shogunate did not come up with a good idea, and Masahiro Abe, the, the, uh, the chief of staff, began to seek the options of foreign, uh, for the daimyos, the uh, lords among the in Japan, who were not involved in, in the the shogunate, their power was increased, and they knew the Toka government was in in decline. So. This such case happened the first time since the establishment of shogunate in early 17th century. Hmm. So, uh, so what what happened was the uh, the governance of the shogunate uh, was in question. At the same time, uh, strengthening of armament by Tokugawa government, Masahiro Abe ordered the construction of bombardment platform in Edo Bay, uh, which like you can see in the photo Odaiba. So these man-made islands were, were constructed throughout the Tokyo Bay and put the uh, um, batteries on it. He then uh, invited John Manjiro, who had returned from the United States to learn about the situation in the United States to the shogunate. And the, uh, the right-hand pic picture is the, uh, the picture for sizing the black ships. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the uh, his second expedition of 1854. Um, from the conclusion, they Japan and US signed the Treaty of Peace and Amity, which which was the first such a uh, international treaty signed by uh, by Japan. So that was February 13. Uh, 1854 in the winter. Uh, Perry made another ship um, trip to Japan after the six months. Actually, um, he, he he's coming back in a year, but he came back in six months, which is rather short. So this was due to Perry's idea that Tokuwa Yoshi had died and that there was a gap in the turmoil in national politics. After a month of consultation after Perry's arrival, Tokugawa shogunate accepted the request for opening of the United States. So on March 31st, 1854, Perry landed in Japan, uh, which is Yokohama, uh, today's Yokohama. And negotiations were led by Hayashi uh, Fusai, who was well-suited negotiating with foreign countries. Therefore, the Treaty of Amity and Friendship between Japan and the United States was signed after the adoption of the country that had lasted more than 200 years was lifted by, by the, uh, um, the sh shogun Tokugawa uh, Yemitsu. Then on June 17, the Shimoda Treaty, which stipulated the detail of the Japan-US Treaty, Amity and Friendship was signed. So um, this, this, that, there are th three deals first, Japan will replenish the food and the fuel when American ships ask for it. Second, Japan will help American find a ship in distress. Third, in cases of, of the first and second I, I mentioned above, American ship can only go at Hakodate and Shimoda. Shimoda is tip of the, um, is the peninsula, as, as many of you have been to uh, Kurofune Festival there. Um, so she, the, the U.S. put the uh, council, uh, first cons consulate in Shimoda. Yes. The force, only the United States will be granted the most favored nation treatment. After completing his uh, Perry's mission to open up Japan, Perry returned to the United States. However, Perry died four years later and the United States entered the Civil War, as I um, mentioned uh, earlier. The control of Asia fell behind Britain and France. 
okay, uh, next, um, this is rather um, um, the, the topic I want to discuss. What was the influence of, uh, um, of Perry uh, after his visit? So um, what, what was the Perry's expression mean to modern Japan's? I would say uh, phenomenal, significant. So the first governance system shift. Japan with so many clans nations wide, that means there are small countries within Japan. The governance system proved ill-suited to encounter the international competition. Choshu, today's Yamaguchi, and Satsuma, today's Kagoshima, clans took leadership and won the competition between Tokugawa shogunate. And Tokugawa shogunate decided to return the authority uh, of governance to the emperor, which led to the creation of government of Japan as one nation, so-called Meiji Restoration of 1868. Secondly, the policy, which is called rich nation and strong nation, which means Japan pursued the strong industrial and commer commerce nation at the same time to establish the world-class army and navy, which proved its power in um, Japan-China war in 1894 to 1895 and Japan-Russia War in 1904 to 1905. Let both were, were Japan's victory. Thirdly, culturally, that Japan became the country East meets West. Mr. Uh, Dr. Samuel Huntington categorized Japan as a fifth civilization, totally different from the continent uh, China or other uh, parts of the world. And indeed, the DNA of hybrid culture is stronger than any other nations in the Pacific to this date. So all were triggered by Perry's expression of 1853 and 1854. In historical perspective, Japan and the West grew bigger and stronger around the same time in late 19th century and 20th century that led the power competition over the Pacific, which led to the war in Pacific, 1941 to 1945. So this will be the final slide I prepare. Um, looks like time is quite good. It's 1029. Uh, let me conclude with uh, this 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 slides. Um, this this slide is as bit personal uh, with me uh, uh, as well. Um, particularly um, the the, the second, the, the center photo on Japanese surrender on the um, September 2nd, 1945. Uh, I saw the flag first time in the um, Naval Academy Museum uh, when I entered the Academy in 1989. And I saw the table, which the Japan surrendered to Allied powers. And the right hand uh, photo on the uh, JS Ise, which I commanded the Japanese task group back in the rain park 2020, I was really moved. Uh, th this is a photo I took. I saw the our neighbor Ensign and the USS uh, Arizona, which was which was really means uh, a lot. And um, pay, of course, pay the respect to the people who gave their lives on that day. So um, how, how was Perry the conclusion? Um, I would say mother of all US-Japan alliance history. So. Perry used American sea power very effectively to open Japan, where it closed the country for more than 250 years. So first come, first serve basis, U.S. has been the key country for Japan since. Although U.S. Civil War, 1861 to 1865, saw the relationship. During our uh, country's uh, relationship, it was only uh, 1941 to 1945 plus late 1930s were the only time we were apart. When Japan surrendered to Allied forces in September 2nd, 1945, um, USS uh, on Missouri, Perry's flag was brought to the ceremony. So um, now I, I, I told you location of the flag right now in Annapolis, Maryland. So uh, today, uh, Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force, JMSDF, where I belong, and the United States Navy 
are the most closest Navy in the Indo-Pacific for the stability and prosperity of the region. And I would say that our Navy naval relation is the foundation of the uh, our alliance. And indeed, uh, I'd like to point out, I live really close to the Ikego um, housing complex. So the US servicemen and the families are the important guests of Japan and the part of Japanese society. And uh, I wish whoever staying in Japan, work in Japan, enjoy the life in Japan. So I would conclude um, the presentation at this moment, and I would like to hand over uh, to Amani and Jeff, please. Thank you, Captain Kitagawa. That was a really interesting presentation. Um, so to begin with um, our questions, um, so once again, everyone, if you have some questions for Captain Kitagawa, please make sure that you put them into the chat. Um, so um, you mentioned that um, initially in your presentation that uh, Commodore Perry is well recognized in Japan. Um, would you say that Perry is viewed positively, specifically amongst Japanese people? Very good point. Um, I would say yes, because um, there's a whoever visited uh, Yokosuka in Kurihama by, 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 by the sea, there was a huge monument with the rock monument. And noting during the war, it's, it's saved. I mean, no one destroyed. So um, in my, as far as I understand, it has been, it never been really negative uh, uh, of impression or, 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 or Perry. So uh, I would say um, uh, that that's my answer. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. So mm -hmm. then um, with regards to um, long-term effects, um, Habib Badui, sorry if I mispronounced your name, asked, uh, what are the key motivations and long-term effects of Commodore Perry's opening of Japan? Hmm. Good. Good point. Um, the main motive would be, uh, I think the big picture strategically would be the imperialism. That, that's because um, in 19th century, the, uh, the countries which start industrialization trying to seek the markets and US was no exception. But in short terms, the, uh, the Paris mission was to get the logistical base for uh, American merchant ships, which getting the like uh, oil, there was no crude oil like now we we use. So um, yeah, th these are these are blended. But as the um, as a naval officer, I see um, Perry's thinking and Perry's um, what he did. He was very foresighted. That's he kind of led. He was even before the uh, the um, you know Mahan. He was even before that. But he pointed that out that US need the uh, like you know um, bases in the Pacific to secure the the uh, ocean for um, you know for for commerce and so forth. So um, I think he he did lay down the foundation of our United States as the like uh, you know Pacific nation in the Pacific nation or. Uh, maritime nation. So um, I think that would be the um, the the answer uh, in terms of long term of the effect or, on the role of the uh, Matthew Perry. So Jeff asked, um, based on what you said, um, it seemed like this visit like coincide with a major turning point. Um, so he wanted to know. Um, if the timing was not during this crucial time frame, uh, do you think the results could have been very different? Uh, good point. Um, there's always um, there was always the um, um, if is in, in interesting history. Um, I would say the if the Perry comes a little early, I think Japan was more reluctant and more. They didn't listen. They will um, maybe more rather fight to to do it. But the uh, Perry's time was um, in from like eighteen twenties. I I said in my presentation, 
there were ships, um, British ships comes, the Russian ships comes, French ships comes, and it, the uh, many ships are started coming out, coming around Japan. And also note that Japan did the um, Sakoku um, policy, which is called the country, but there were diplomatic consolidation with Dutch and in uh, China. No, China, their country changed uh, from Min to Shin and blah, blah, blah. But in, I would say the intelligence which is provided by Dutch was phenomenal. So every year, Dutch delegation comes to Nagasaki, from Nagasaki to Edo, and did the report to Shogunate, what's going on in the world. So also in 1850s, 60s, um, the, um, like, like I'm from Choshu, the Yamaguchi, these young men went out and did the, went to like Shanghai and what's going on, like opium war and so forth. And they, they got the, gathered the information they felt like uh, Tokugawa um, government also, but like wise clan felt it's, it'll be the Japan's turn to influence or rather colonize. So um, I think the timing was right uh, when the Perry came that, you know, you know, don't, you don't want to be late for the bus starts. That I think that was Japan's uh, um, mentality was, was like that in like 1850s and 60s. Uh, so accordingly, so Japan did the rich nation and strong, strong, uh, strong country uh, that's to, to catch up to, to the West, if you like. That, that I stop here, so. That's very, very interesting. I guess um, I'm kind of curious. Um, so as you mentioned, like the, the Chinese and the Dutch were already in Japan prior to Commodore Perry's um, expedition. Why, why did it take the United States to kind of start this, you know, opening up Japan, if you will? Ah, that, well, good point. And I think the uh, today's audience can help me out. Uh, but but the, um, th this is lots of, lots of do with go west, go west. So it's, it was urgent. Um, so um, the, it was the, when, when they, now the ships comes uh, to, there were, the ships comes for, uh, for wading, oil and fishing. And so needs the, uh, the like, um, you know, um, food or water, whatever. And also note in 1814, 15, 60, there were ships with, with the uh, steam um, proportion comes out. That means in those days, the coal. So you need the, the station they, because um, you, you cannot run forever like sailing or, or, or the wind. You, you, you have to, you need the coal uh, to burn the engine. So in, in that area, J you, Japan, the other countries had, had the station already, okay? So for example, uh, like France, they, they were in the like um, Indochina, which today is Vietnam, and Britain had, had the like space in like Hong Kong, a uh, bit, bit later, but they, they had access to China or India, and Dutch, they had in the like Indonesia and so forth. But in, note in 1850s, 40s, United States they, they didn't have the colonizer like the Philippines, you know. Uh, so uh, that was the, um, the US, uh, in my opinion, US had the most urgent needs to have more access to, to Japan than other countries. Um, back to you, Amani. Thank you. So um, Vivian Ning, um, she, uh, this, this person asked, um, was Perry's visit to Japan really that crucial to the opening and modernization of Japan? Or was Japan more or less going to embark on the direction anyway, given the happenings in the rest of the world? Very good point. Very good point. Um, as a historian, um, I would like to think about the what, what if. Um, I think Japan will open up anyhow. Like I said, because of the, uh, to keep the, because Japan knew 
all countries except like Thailand were colonized in in 19th century. You know, the the today's Southeast Asia were were all colony at that point in 19th century, and and J Japan understand that. Uh, so to to keep the independence uh, of Japan needs to protect um, you know and have a good economy uh, to to do it. So I would say the Paris expedition expedited or pushed. Um, the, there's a famous saying called gaiatsu, like foreign pressure, that kind of start from Perry. So uh, when, when Japan wants to change, um, the foreign pressure expedite the change. So um, that kind of sense starting on that. So Japan may have changed anyhow, but the Perry um, speed up. I get back to you, Amani. Yeah. Thank you. So that, um, I guess I want to kind of go now towards the United States. So you mentioned that um, the United States kind of gave Japan that push. So with regards to the U.S., um, Akihiko Fujino asks, um, you know, the U.S. started this kind of expedition project 30 years after the War of 1812. Um, do you think they, that they could do it alone? Or, yeah, or, or perhaps maybe could they have done this expedition with another country? Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, we have to understand the international politics of 19th century. So today we have more rather system. For example, um, I mean, to tomorrow, like President Biden will come to Japan as like G7 summit. And we have like alliance or like international organization norms and so forth. But when the Paris day, um, the in Europe, the like um, um, like you know, Vienna system may come, you know the you know power balance and so forth. But the uh, U.S. was was more isolated. It was not until late. 19th century, uh, which U.S. going more over overall and and then uh, have more foreign relations because U.S. was too busy within inside to go into west or frontier or more deal with Mexico or internally and also in 1812 it was a big big war with Britain and and so it was more 19th century was more like for U.S. was to preparation to be, be, be more rather superpower uh, boom for 20th century. So um, I would say of it was, and actually US has been really reluctant uh, in the diplomatically to, to have some, you know, these treaty or whatever for, for in its history. So I would say the, uh, the timing was, was right uh, when the US has, has kind of governed that um, North American continent and comes out. And also, um, I would say the US won't, won't do this with, with other country at that moment because US want their benefit by, by, by itself. So I back to you. That's Thank my opinion. You. Thank you. Uh, so I, I I wanted to add to that. Um, Akihiko um, mentioned about um, the, the UK asked the US in that regard. Um, so yeah. perhaps not exactly um, teaming up with another country, but um, mm -hmm. the UK had asked the US, I guess, to begin this kind of project. Good, good point, good point. Note that UK and US had battle, battle, okay? Um, actually, I personally was a defense attache to UK uh, 10 years ago. And now the US and UK has like special relations. Uh, and, but those days you have to understand the UK and the US fought. And even in 20th century, the US has a war plan with the United Kingdom. So um, it was very, it would be hard to think that UK and UK will do something with US together in like 1830s or 40s or 50s. I think. Back to you, Amani. Thank you so much. Um, so Chise Ueda, she, or my apologies, this person asked, why did the Tokugawa government and the US government agree with the opening um, Hakka 
Haka Odate. Ah, okay. And um, Sh Shimoda. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think it could be uh, other major ports like Nagasaki or Yokohama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, good point. The initially was um, Shimoda and Hakodate, uh, but eventually they opened, like you said, like more, more, more ports to come. Like Yokohama is a good example, and Nagasaki as well. But the uh, that that was more Tokugawa government doesn't want the foreign relation, uh, foreign influence to Edo today's Tokyo. So, I mean, actually Shimoda is quite isolated in the tip of the uh, peninsula. And Hakodate is not in Honshu, in Hokkaido, uh, the, the far, far, far north. So, um, so it's, it was like um, incrementally increased. So initially it was that, but in the, in, in the uh, very quite soon they increased the, the, the port uh, op open. Yeah. So um, that, that was, I think, major uh, background for that. So um, the next question is going to be um, about um, your perspective of um, the Satsu uh, Satsuma and British mm -hmm. conf confrontation um, and oh. its relation to Commodore Perry's arrival and Japan's response. Mm -hmm. This question is uh, from Habib Bat Batu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the uh, Satsuma and Tokugawa. Okay, so. Um, the good, good, very good point, very good point. This, this is if the US was the first who did the big expedition, <laughs> but what happened was, I'm sorry, but US lost the interest of outside because of civil war. Um, I think uh, any American history, um, civil war was, was remarkable and didn't have any room or resource to go overseas, you know? So that was 1860s. And this is very international politics, power balance. Any country comes out, the kind of, some country will fit in. It's, it's, it's really obvious. So um, what happened was, was the, uh, you know, the, the, and that perspective. And within Japan, power struggle started, okay? So the, the clans like Choshu and Satsuma had the sense of urgency. If they let the Tokugawa government run the country, the Japan will be ruined uh, and, and be colonized. So what happened was, even though the uh, Tokugawa was strong in military, so uh, the Tokugawa, Choshu, and, and Satsuma, they tie, tied up, they, actually they fought with Britain first, you know, but they realized, okay, that it, it is very important to team up. So these Choshu and Satsuma team up with Britain and Tokugawa team up with France to buy the weapons and, 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 so, and so forth. So, um, um, History may have been different if the U.S. keep engaging Japan in like 1860s, where uh, the U U.S. had to concentrate concentrate on the civil war. Back to you, Amani. Yeah. Thank you. So um, this is not a question, but more so um, some comments that were made by some of our audience members. Um, so um, Lance Gatling. Um, mentioned about um, geostrategic situation with the carving up of China by European powers and the US motivation to secure open doors due to a lack of treaty land bases in China. So securing coaling and resupply facilities in Japan could offset its weakness in China. Um, maybe could you possibly speak about like some this kind of ge uh, ge geostrategic mm. situation mm. and you know mm. uh, your thoughts on you know these kinds of comments? Hmm. Good, good point. Um, China is a very long but interesting history. Um, China never governed by one system, however. So currently, um, the uh, Communist China is only like 70 years old and they, they, they're like dynasty change, change their history. Vice Japan, emperor, 3000 years, boom. 
that's just delegated to, to government. So fundamentally, the continuity is totally different from Japan to China in history, history wise. In that sense, um, so so what happened was the um, uh, the where the Euro European found the market is going to the east, going east, like. Uh, they got India, they got Indonesia, they got Southeast Asia, now going up to, to China. And, and chi the, in 1830s uh, and 40s and 50s, Chinese, uh, the, the governance, which is Xin Dynasty, was, was starting collapse, starting collapse. So there were room to come in. And those days, there was not like um, World Trade Organization or any other tree. You know, trade on answer. Just you go and do do the business. You know, like West Indy country. So um, what happened wa wa was the um, many country uh, found opportunity in 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 China. So literally, the U.S. has to come. Uh, you know, to, to either from the uh, uh, Pacific Ocean or going around the Atlantic and come, but it's lot shorter to come to Pacific. So, i.e. Opening Japan give the uh, you know the base or, or the forward basing for US to go into that Eurasian continent. So um, in that sense, um, Perry's visit and opening the treaty uh, give the push to uh, to US uh, influence on uh, on on those those days as well after the civil war. Back to you. So maybe this question is a bit. Um kind of far-fetched, but um, from some research that I've done, in your opinion, um, as I mentioned earlier uh, with my question about um, uh, how Commodore Perry is viewed in Japan by Japanese people, mm -hmm. so who do you think is viewed more positively or has a maybe a stronger legacy in Japan, uh, Commodore Perry or General MacArthur? Oh, good point. Very good point. Okay, uh, I would say um, maybe MacArthur, John MacArthur is famous than President Biden, in my opinion, uh, because people learn, Japanese children learn the history and modern history. Very good point. Um, uh, but I would say um, maybe Perry is a bit uh, more positive. It's very hesitant to say because um, um, US occupation had, uh, various opinion within Japan. Uh, but the, uh, for the Perry, it was more positive to, for Japan transition to the uh, modern you know, uh, Western country. So I would say Perry is more, more positive and neutral. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, from there's some research that I've done, I was really um, kind of surprised is to hear that some Japanese people um, viewed General MacArthur in a very positive light considering, mm -hmm. you know, the, the war. But um, I was just really curious about, you know, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the kind of correlation, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess with, you know, some of our last questions, um, in your opinion, um, what are some, as, as someone who has a career in the, uh, with the Japanese Self-Defense Force, and you have um, a lot of connections to the American military. Um, what would you say are some things, some remnants today that you see um, due to uh, this Paris expedition? So like, for example, um, mm. I, I made a connection between like the uh, base open open base days. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of reminded me about when you talked mm -hmm. about like Japanese uh, merchants and people mm -hmm. trying to uh, board the the black ships. Mm -hmm. are, are there any other kind of remnants mm -hmm. that you can see in you know today? Oh, good good point. Um, I think many of the audience has been or interest in Japan. I would say Japanese people. Most Japanese people are, 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 have a curiosity, curiosity. And I think this Japanese curiosity is a bit characteristic. And, you know, may, right now the inbound has coming back. The uh, tourism is booming back to Japan. And, well, Japanese people basically welcome and enjoy it. And so it was, um, for Perry's visit was like, you know, um, so omoshiroi, it's, it's so, so interesting so different. 
So it was like a game changer or the shift or, or the influence. Uh, and so I think that's that was lucky for uh, maybe both of us, maybe Japan and the United States, that US was the first, first country to, to do the, such a role as opening the, the door or knocking door in Japan to be more with internationally. And so that's, uh, that has a tradition. And also what happens in 20th century, uh, US-Japan uh, collide uh, quite, quite massively. Uh, but, but with that things, that long history, we knew the good days. So it's, I think we, we, we both understood after the war that we, 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 we must do the things together. And this is like continuity. And so the, um, if you take statistic about um, image of the United States or even to um, US service in Japan, it's, it's quite very positive um, compared with other uh, the countries which US has the basis, whatever. So, um, and it's, and I think to do with the long tradition history, going back to the Perry, um, I do strongly believe that. So our final question is actually going to be uh, from an audience mem member named Matthew Perry. Um, and uh, Mr. Perry asked, why did MacArthur want Perry's 1854 flag on the Missouri, the, I'm assuming the USS Missouri? Good point. Uh, my answer would be because of the uh, Douglas MacArthur. You know, I think everybody knows, seen the uh, movie or whatever, he liked to show off, you know, He's a, he was a performer. In a way, he's a, like a strategic communicationist. So it's, it was natural that uh, ask the Naval Academy Museum to pull out the flag and bring back to, to, to the US of Missouri. And, and I think that was giving the messaging, messaging not only to Japan, but also to the country present. RI powers on the USS Missouri. And I think MacArthur's message was uh, US will engage you know, in this region and, and that's show off uh, things. So, so in all, that was MacArthur, I would say, yes. Thank you so much. Mm. So thank you again, Captain Kitagawa for your presentation today and taking time um, to be with us this morning. Um, and once again, thank you to our program sponsor, the Japan Foundation New York. Um, and lastly, I want to present some upcoming events. Looks like we're having a little bit of issues with the screen share. If everyone could just stay patient, please. I'm not sure what I'm What's well, we, we don't need the screen share. We could just mention it. It's okay. fine if you could just tell us in the okay. And yes. I'll I'll send links in the chat so you guys can catch it there. Yes, please. So um, this upcoming Thursday, we are having an in-person uh, event for the community conversation. So Thursday, May 18th at uh, 1753. If you are in FUSA, please join us for that event. It is called the Alliance Politics in an Age of Great Power, Rivalry Implications for US-Japan Alliance. So once again, this is an in-person event this Thursday in FUSA. So um, they will begin with refreshments and then the seminar will be following that. Um, on Wednesday, uh, May 24th at um, 19 or seven o'clock, 7 p.m. Um, on Zoom, uh, there will be a Indo-Pacific policy dialogue um, on the US-Japan relations avoiding the Thucydides, Thucydides trap of spiraling towards it. This will be uh, presented by Professor Nagy. So um, please join us on Zoom for that um, event. And um, the next Getting to Know Japan webinar will be on Thursday, May 25th. Um, this one will be at 8 p.m. So um, 
please make note of that. Um, and it will be on Zoom. It will be on the Kaizoku in the Seito Inland Sea. So uh, once again, this is on Zoom. If you have time, please join us. So uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Once again, thank you so much, Captain Kitagawa, for your time. Um, and thank you, everyone, for your really great questions. We hope that you will join us uh, next week for the next Getting to, know Web Getting to Know Japan webinar. And again, if you have time, please join us in person in FUSA as well. Um, and I hope you all have a nice rest of your morning. And we'll be seeing you next week, hopefully. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>